Right. I'm so glad you've all come on and I cannot believe it. We are now on 226 people on this live. I paid extra to Zoom because I was thinking it might go just over 100. So I just paid an extra sort of 50 pounds to say, you know, we want, it was, I think it was up to 500. And we have 225 people, so I'm so glad I did that. Otherwise, we could only get 100 on, so that's really, really good. And I'm really impressed with my hat, you can see my face. I'm really impressed with everything that you've done and all the hats that you've made. I'm just um, overwhelmed, you know, I'm out of a job now. They're just, they're just really, really good. All the colours and the shapes, and you've really gone to town. I've been making a, a little one a bit just here and it's no nowhere near anything that you've made so um i'm really amazed and well done for everybody that's joined in and done this i'm just going to quickly go to my share my screen so i can just in case anybody's new to me new to the uh, millinery um sorry the inspiring creative uh, milliners group then i just quickly tell you about me what i've been doing and then we'll get started putting elastic on I've got a feather to show you and um, I've got another trim to show you with felt. So what was I doing? Yeah, I'm going to share my screen a sec. Okay. Can you see that all right, or are we all at the bottom? I can try and move that. Better. Okay, so I am Catherine Elizabeth Millinery. Can you all see the screen all right? Catherine, no, I'm on your working screen, I think. Uh, I'm also on your working screen. Yes, and me. Me. Yeah, likewise. Me. I can see you two working from home. Here are some tips to help you meet like a pro. Yes, likewise. That's what I see too. Yeah, me too. But I can like see homepage. Well, That's what I see too. Yeah, it's freaking out. <laughs> Catherine, is it possible you've got 80, but you've clicked on the the 82 people and not the 220 odd? Um, was there two lots of people? I don't know, but you, you clicked on the 82 on the third tab across. I don't know. I've not done this before. Oh, okay. <laughs> if, if you come out of um, sharing your screen and then go back to share screen, it should give you the options of all the screens that you want to choose. Oh, there you go. You're back. You're back. Okay. So, oh, so I have. So when I you have the chat, when, said, yeah, when go you on. go to share your screen, it'll bring up the options of the screens that you potentially have got open already, and then you press the one that you do want it to share. So I wanted to share my keynotes. So I'll try again. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate computers. Right. I'm gonna go to that, and then this one. Can you all see that? Yes. yes. Yeah. Woo! Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Well done. Get that out of the way. Right. Well, so hat designer. I've been a hat designer for about 20 years, over 20 years, as I've said before. Love hats, obsessed with it. I'm so glad that I was able to do that as a, as a career. I first started out um, when a lady came from Frederick Fox and showed me a hat that she cast from rocks. So I just thought that was amazing because it was, it was, it was art, it was sculpture, it wasn't just um, you know, a, a sort of hat that would keep you warm. It was something just beautiful that you could wear and feel taller and you know, look more beautiful and just, just lovely. So I got hooked on hats because it was art and sculpture and everything else all together. And then I worked for Stephen Jones for a while. And then I worked for Catherine Delaney in theatre and film. And um, these are a couple of hats that I've made in the past. And I have a shop in the Oxo Tower and I've had that about three years. Before that, I had some other studios. So here's I me mean, winning a London Lifestyle Award. I've made for the Noisettes. I've 
Melia um, Shingi, for Lily Allen, uh, Dita Von Tees and Henry Holland and different people like that. And I just love it. I love this career. So I would love you, all you guys to get into it as well. So if you really enjoy it, then this is something that you should be looking to go further in. Um, last year I made this one here. Um, we were in the Cocaine magazine. Um, I don't know if you can see on the side there, but I went to the palace and wore my hat at the palace. And uh, that was all fun. I had a lot of press. I was on ITV and I've been on ITV twice actually. And on the BBC as well, up in the corner on the left, that was me teaching people how to make a hat live on air. Been on the Alan Titchmarsh show and uh, recently last year we were at, I think it was Goodwood Hat Racing um, with Mark, the stylist. And also I do a lot of millinery events. So that's really helped my business because I've been able to sort of teach a lot of people to do corporate events, team building and things like that. And this is some of it. We do it with afternoon tea and we do it with champagne. So it's really lovely. So I've been making hats for a long time and I have been teaching for a long time. And I love to just see what other people are creating and making. And that's one of the reasons why I started this challenge was to see what you all come up with, sort of give you a bit of an idea of something that I, um, you know, decide, sort of designed about 10 years ago. And then, you know, just see where you go with it and see what happens. And there's so many people now that make these sort of hats and it's just really lovely. This is a few events as well that I've done. So I've done it with Benefit Cosmetics. I've worked with them quite a lot. And this was a press event that we had. Uh, this was with Marie Claire and Tatler came. So we've done quite a lot of that in a, re a lovely restaurant. Um, Ketner's, when Ketner's was open, we had a big one in there and we had a photo shoot in there. So that's really nice. So you might have seen that picture around that sort of iconic table picture. Um, that was what we shot with Benefit Cosmetics. So that was really good because they could actually do the makeup whilst I was teaching people how to make hats. So that was really fun. Um, okay, so that's just a little bit about me. I will exit this. Come back. All right. So just in case, I will put a smaller hat on so you can see my face. Have you all got your hats ready? Mm -hmm. yep. So... <laughs> One thing that I was asked, I'm just going to show you, you've all seen it, but just in case, when you're cutting your piece in half and then you want to cut that sort of curvy shape, you cut it in half like this, don't you? And then you've got two halves. So this is the bit that's going around your head. And then some people were just wondering about this, about the actual S shape on the back. So I'm just gonna quickly go over that. What I did was go in. And then about a, sort of a third of the way up, go out again. And then come in again. And then out. So I do it in, in um, thirds. So sort of come in, going out, coming in and going out again. So that's how you then create the bat. You can make it slightly more wavy if you want to, but that's nice. Then this bit goes over your head and you just sort of curl the back like we have done. And then this one here is a little bit wonky. So I would just cut that as well to make it a little bit nicer. So a couple of people are asked about that again. So just to show you that. Now, there's another feather one I want to show you. If any of you have got a pheasant feather, this is a nice small one, just to show you how to get that from that into a S shape. I tend to take off this rough bit here. So you can just pull it off. and then pull off a bit at the bottom. And then get your scissors and keep them closed. And then we can't really run our scissors up so much with this one because it's quite thick. So to get more of a bend, you might want to just gently, gently bend it just slightly. And I tend to bend that one way. And then I'll get the top and I'll bend that the other way. Shh, 
Thank you. Have any of you worked on feathers like that before actually curling them? You can do it with tongs and all sorts, but... Thank you. Oh, I've got doggies. <laughs> Doggy are going mad. <laughs> so it's nice then to do a bit of an S shape and then I would trim it a little bit as well. So maybe you, you know, you want to have a look and just sort of trim the bottom a bit, trim up here a bit just to make that a bit more perfect. It takes a little while because every time you cut it, the feathers move a little bit. But you can actually smooth them together with your fingers because the grease that's on your fingers um, actually helps to put the feathers back again. So if you ever find they're separating, you can just do that with your fingers and it goes back together. So then I would just trim a little bit, maybe take that top bit off. And just keep doing that until you're happy with it. It's got a little bit of dent. But that is a nice way of curling in different directions. You can't do that with quills so much. With quills, you'd have to have a curling tong or you can do it around a big tube. So you could get a big tube of um, cardboard, like a toilet roll, really tall. And then you can wrap it around and actually use a lot of steam. But with this one, you can just curl it. So that's one feather and that's the one I've got in these. So if you have a fancy doing that, it's a quick way. And then another trim with felt would be to cut a big leaf shape. So keep all your scraps because the tiniest thing is going to work on a hat. Okay, so we've got that, and then you can cut into it as if you're cutting leaves. So you could just go to the middle. You could draw a line down there with some chalk. You could do a big fat stitch just to sort of like a running stitch, just to, so you know where the middle is. Or you could just do it by eye. Don't try and cut too far in. Otherwise, I won't do all of it, but you get the idea. It's working like that. And then we can do the same on the other side to match it. So I won't do all of it because you'll be here for ages. But then you can get this effect and you can actually start curling it and adding that in. So you can sort of, well, it looks better when it's all, the whole thing's done, but you can just curl it all around and start adding that to the front of your piece. So just keep going, chopping it all the way down to the middle that side, and then all the way down to the middle that side. And then you could put a piece of wire running all the way down the middle and cover it. So you could cover the wire in a lace or a ribbon first, and then sort of stick that on or sew that on down there. And then you could twist it in a really big way and actually get a nice big curve to go up on your piece if you put wire on it. What I did with the leather under in the academy was have two pieces of leather because it's thin obviously so it's a bit easier. So you can have one piece and um, you can stick them together with a piece of wire in the middle and then cut it down the sides and then you can twist it into a really nice tall shape. So Phelps it's a bit thicker you don't want to be sewing um, sort of sticking two bits together but you could put a nice bit of wire down there which has been covered in a ribbon um, and then twist it up so then you've got that one and you've got that one and then the other thing is to cut lots of leaf shapes and you've all been doing that you've all been cutting out 
um, and putting on your hats, which is great. Another one is to use a hole punch, um, so a leather hole punch. So then you actually you've got big circles and small circles and you can sort of cut into it. So I did that with a hat. And that's in the academy as well, one of them, where the end is sort of small holes and then it gets bigger and bigger. Um, and you can create a nice little detail effect. So you could start doing holes around here. You can also cut things out, which I noticed one of you had done is sort of cut a leaf shape out in, in the hat, in the top of the hat, and then put it down the bottom, which I think is really nice. So it's really lovely to see all your work and it's really inspiring for everybody to see everybody's work. Um, so have a look at everyone's if you haven't done it yet. Now with elastic, this is the elastic that I use. You can buy, I buy this, from Barnet and Lawson in London. You can get it from Be Unique Millinery. Most of the millinery suppliers sell it, but some of them sell it with metal bits on the end. I don't really like that because every client has got a different head size and you often need to measure it for the client. So if you buy it all with the metal bits already, then you can't really adjust it. And sometimes it can be dangerous for the hat to sort of push it through. Cinema is not too bad, but with felt, you don't always want to be cutting a, a hole and putting it through. So I tend to measure for, for the particular client. So say if I'm measuring it on my head, I get this whole reel, it's about 48 pounds. This will last me a year, because I've got quite a lot of that. And um, it's quite thin and it's round and it's about 1.5 millimeters. So 1.5 or two is good. Don't get any thicker than that and try not to get any thinner than 1.5 because if it's too thin, it will wear out over time and you want that to be uh, reasonably a reasonable size but not too much you want it to disappear in the hair but you don't want it to start breaking or be too thin so that is a good size i don't tend to use the flat one i do i always use a round one because that disappears a bit more but if you've got flat one just for today then just use that um or if you've got a hair band and you want to use that then i can show you with this one what i've done so first of all elastic you put it around the back of your head and you just bring it up and then you just Think about where your hat is and how big it is. So if my hat was that big, I'd bring it obviously to there. If my hat base is this big, I just bring it to there. And I pull it around just loosely and then I'll pull it by two inches. So I'll just pull it by two inches and that gives me enough pull, a sort of stretch. So it just stretches it enough. It's not going to make you feel sick, um, but it is stretching it enough so it pulls back and that means it keeps it on your head. The reason why I use elastic is say I've got one like this. I always put it on the brow of my head here, just above my eyebrow. And if I put it there, then as the elastic's pulling back, it's keeping it on. But if I had the hat here, then as the elastic pulls back, it will pull off completely. So if you're using elastic, then put it here. Never put it flat on your head. If you're going to have it flat or you're just going to have it here, then um, use it, excuse me, use a hairband or a comb would be better because you can sort of slide a comb in. But I like hats that are on the side anyway, because I, I tend to find um, they're a little bit more flattering and it can cover this parting side because I've got quite thin hair here. So I can put the hat there and it actually covers it up. Because if I put the hat on that side, I would have less hair here and no hair here either. But if I put the hat here, then I can style up this side and make it a bit bigger and it always looks better. So I put them on my left side. You can put it on your right, wherever your parting is, it doesn't matter. Or if you've got a fringe, it doesn't matter then what side. So here, just above your eyebrow, and as the elastic pulls back, it keeps it on. So we wanna put it around your he head. And just imagine how much you've got here. Don't pull it together, just leave enough space for your base. And so my base is about that big. So I'll pull it around so it's quite loose-ish, it's just, just Putting around my head, it's sort of there. Then I'll pull it by two inches and then I'll maneuver it and just change my position of my finger there so that it feels tight enough but it's not going to make you feel sick. That's a good length. I think, okay, that sort of fits me, it works for me. You can do this on your client as well because if you measure it with a tape measure and you measure her head, it sort of doesn't always work so you need to just sort of put that around but most of the time people are the same so if your if your head size is similar to your client's head size then you can get away with doing it on you otherwise if you've got a larger head you might want to just check so that's going to work also then we're going to make little loops on the end of this 
So that's also going to pull it in a little bit. So I've got that. Then I'll put my hat on my head and I have to figure out where it's going to go. So I'll go from behind my ear, straight up, and wherever that hits, I'll put a pin in there. And then from here, wherever I go, I go up from behind the ear, and wherever that hits, I'll put a pin there as well. They're normally opposite each other. So here I've got a pin here, and I've got the other one which I've started on this side. So they're normally opposite, but you need to just work out at least where your first one is to work out your second one. Um, sometimes if you've got it really forward, then your, your elastic might come here, it, or you might come here if you want it to be further back. Um, but most of the time it's always in the middle. So I worked out where it's gonna go. I've got my pins in. Then I need to work on my elastic and make a little loop. So I'll get my thread and I'll always use black for black elastic and white for white elastic. I won't have a, a color because I want it to match the hair, not the hat, because this has got to disappear in your hair. So if you've got white, then that's fine because you can tea stain it and it can go a nice caramelly color for your client if she's got sort of blondish hair. If you've got very, very, very white hair, which hardly anyone has, but if they do, then keep it white. But if it's a blondy color, you can tea stain it. Most people, this will work because even with blonde people, they have sort of darker roots, so it still disappears in. So with that, if you've got flat or this, it'll still work. You just loop it over about a centimeter Find the middle. Can you see that? See it on my head. So I've looped it over about a centimeter. I've found the middle of it. Squish it together. Then I'll put a little tiny stitch in the side. Tiniest little stitch, because I don't want to go right through the elastic because it might break. So I'm just doing it on the very edge. Pull that through and then I'm going to wrap it around in the middle about 10 times. So I'm just wrapping it around in the middle about 10 times and then my stitch will go underneath all the thread that I have just wrapped. So I'll go underneath the thread and automatically create this loop and I'll just put that back through the loop to knot it off. Do that about three times just to make sure. I always do it twice, but then three for good luck. So I'll just do it again. So you're doing it with me, I hope. Yes. Cool. So I've made another little loop. I'm just going to go through. Sorry, did you hear me then? <laughs> yeah, you're not on you. <laughs> That's fine. If you want to ask any questions, feel free to come forward. But not all at once. Um, so there, so we've got a loop. So I've just gone underneath. I've done that three times. And then just pull it to see if it's going to come undone. Because if it comes undone, you want to do it again. But if you just pull it and it's okay, then that's good. Then we sew that loop in. A lot of people do it with um, what you call them knots. So they'll wrap it up into a big knot and they'll sew the knot in. But I find if you're going through the elastic a lot, it's hard to get it through and it might break on you. So I prefer to do it like that. And then I'll sew that into my side. Catherine, are you using double or single thread? I tend to use single for everything. Um, you can use you can use double. That's fine because you're not going to see it anyway. I'm just used to using single all the time. I feel like I'm a bit low down. Yeah. A bit higher. So are you sewing through the elastic or through the loop? So now I'm going to use the loop. So all, the only time I've gone through the elastic is the tiniest little bit on the side, and then I've wrapped around it ten times, and then I've gone underneath the thread and back through the loop and pulled it tight to um, knot it off. And I've done that three times. I'm going to do it again because this hat I've got here, I've already attached one end. So I could do it again for you quickly. So I just fold it over by a centimetre. Tiniest stitch on the side of the, the elastic. It's good if you knot your thread as well. I haven't done it, but 
if you knot it, then it won't, you know, it won't come out. I'm just going to hold it. And then I'll wrap it 10 times-ish, roughly. Then I'll go underneath, underneath my thread there. And then back through the loop. And back through the loop. All right, so then I'll just check it. Okay, that feels secure. Then keep your thread on because you'll still use that. And then when you're going to put it on your hand. Catherine, so that's much neater than I was taught originally. <laughs> Is it? It's very nice, yeah. Okay. Then if you've got a little button base like this, because this one here, I put a button base underneath it. So that's the next level with your hat. So if you don't want to have just that touching your head, you can make a button base to go underneath it all. So you can just, if you have a button base, you can just grab a section like that, put it on there and have this coming out. So your, your loop is always facing in and your elastic is coming out. Because if it's the other way around and you put the loop facing out, out at the end of the day because it'll just be going backwards on itself so have the elastic loop going down into the hat oh. like this one that i've already sewn in so it's going down into the hat the same with the, wherever you're putting it so if i had say if i made a hat like this you've just got your base base then you would cut your, you know, with your finger, you would come up and it would probably go inside the hat with this one. You don't, or you could go on the edge, but you can't go on the edge here because it, your elastic would be right down here. So you just push it up inside and wherever that hits, say there and there, you would sew your loops here and here. So just push your finger up inside so you can figure out where it's going to go. Hi, oh. Catherine. Hello. Oh. Hi. I found oh. these in a charity shop. Are they a millinery thing? I'll have to find you. Oh. Put, put it up it, to the screen. Oh, I can put um, it on. Oh. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, are they yeah. um, vintage? Yeah. That, that, yeah, that, those little straw things I found in a charity shop, and I guess they were like some sort of fascinator base or something. Yeah, that's nice. They can use just little, um, yeah, little fascinated pieces, or you could join them all together into a big hat. Ooh, I like that idea. Thank you. <laughs> I can have three. Say, I've done it before, and I've had one here, one here, one here. Um, or you could put that underneath okay. the belt. Yeah, like. Yeah. I can't see it. Yes, you can fit it inside. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, who else? Somebody else asking a question? Hello. So if you um, sew the elastic straight in to the, to the fabric, does it need to be uh, like an extra layer of felt to stop it pulling? Or should it be okay? Um, it should have, it should have pulled, okay, I'm just doing this. Um, you, it's going to pull down. So it's, it's okay. not going to make a dent here. You're not going right through the felt. Okay. You're not going right through it. You're just catching, because it's quite thick. So we're yeah. just catching an area. We're not going through to that side. We're just catching a bit there. And then because it's sort of pulling it down, it's, it's fine. Um, if you're sewing it into something like this as well, we have to sew this down or it'll pull all of this out when it pulls. So we have to yes. tap this down afterwards. Um, and if you, that's why I sew it to here as well. I don't sew it to the base because if I did that, then yes, you would end up getting a dent on this side. But with okay. these, you're all right because it's pulling that way and it's pulling that way and it doesn't tend to make, make a dent. Unless it's too, too tight. If it does that, it might be too tight. But you'll feel it as well if it's too tight. Okay, thank you. Catherine. Hello. Hi, sorry. Um, it might be the Prosecco, but uh, why are we doing a loop for, or not just like to, um, <laughs> sewing in the elastic straight to the hat? So I'm not, I'm, I'm unsure because I've, I've done my loop and I've sewn it, but mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just there. Um, if you just sewed elastic plain, 
can I come out of gallery? If you come, if you just sewed it in like this, uh, you'd have to sew through the elastic to get it on, and then it would break. So it just oh oh okay. I'm sorry. I know it's um sorry. <laughs> I'm a newbie. Loop so that then you're only going through the elastic once by catching it and then oh, oh, and then course. what you're going to do is use this loop to sew it on. So you're going to sew through the loop and you're going to catch it a bit here and then you're going to catch a stitch here and then you're going to yeah. catch a stitch this side and you're going to keep doing that until it feels secure. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry if it sounds a, a silly um, question. No, but I, a silly question. I am a I beginner. Thinking, I was thinking <laughs> the same. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. There's no so, such thing as a stupid question. No. Oh. I had that at school, you know, when you ask and the teacher goes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to mute myself now. <laughs> so if you can see that, I'm just putting it on my bit there and I'm going to catch a little stitch at the bottom. I wish I could show you all in real life. But I'm just going through there, just the bottom, if you can see that. And then I'll just do that again to make it stronger. And then I'm going to do a stitch on the side of this loop. So I'm catching a bit of felt and I'm going through the middle of the loop. And then I'm going to change it to the other side. And then I'm going to make sure I also do the back. So the back where we originally put the uh, thread. So I'm going there as well, because otherwise it will flip as well. So I have to do a stitch there. So that's my sort of first round of stitches, then I would do it all again. So again, you want about 10 stitches going around and around. So I do another one at the front there. And a few more on the sides. I need more thread now. And then when you've done that about 10 times, yank it. And if it you know, comes off, you need a few more stitches. But if that's secure, then you're good to go, you're done. And then with this button one, I would then tack all of these bits in here. And then I'd put a lining in or a Petersham base sort of ribbon in here to hide all of this mess. But I would just tack it down a bit so that it doesn't sort of pull it out. Same with these. And again, you want to just catch some of the felt because it's quite thick. So you can go through some of it without going through all of it because you don't want to come right through to the front and then see your stitch. You just want it all to be on the back. And then with these ones as well, it might look a bit messy at the end of the day inside. So then you could put a little lining in just here, or you could put a little bit of Petersham, unless you're selling it for a lower price, then you don't need much. But if you want to sell it for more of a higher price, I would finish it off nicely in there. So your elastic would just be here and here. I'll go, oh, I haven't got it with me, my other pink one. But, so it should look like this. If you've got a button one, if not, you'll just see it on there. Any other questions? I can go to the chat box. We've got loads going on in the chat box now. It must be easy for using thicker elastic. That's on my shopping list. What what gauge is yours? Do you think it's a millimeter? I have no idea. It's just elastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm new. To, I'm new to this. I will purchase the correct one. So hairbands, I have covered one of these before, so you could cover the whole thing in ribbon and then you could sew it in or you could get headbands which have got a sort of black or a coloured sort of fluffy bit at the top, poofy bit, and then they've covered it in a, a satin. Um, you could sew those in, they're a little bit easier because then you can just sort of hide your thread by going through it all. But all I do with these is I sew it at the top here and then the sides. So I've done one at the sides there, one at the sides there and one at the top there. And I can see that thread. So then what I could do is color the, the whole thing in. Well, it is orange, but I could color it in maybe a silver, get a silver spray and just silver it so you can't see the stitch. Or I could have covered all of this in a lace or thread or ribbon and then sewn it in. And then when you do it, you can just sort of go through the top bit of the lace through the whole thing and back the other side so you don't need to see any of the stitches so that's all so again i would put the headband on your head and then get the hat again and just measure where that should sit on the headband 
you might want to put a little bit of tape or something on the headband so that you can mark where it should go take it off then put it back in and sew it on so you could do one of the sides first then i do the other side then i do the top and then lastly with a comb if you had a comb um, you know the the sort of long ones with little teeth i sometimes cover if i'm doing cinema i'll cover the top bit with a piece of cinema and then i'll sew into that and i'll sew um to about sort of a half a centimeter in from the edge i'll just go through around the teeth and just sew the end and sew it in to the back section there so that when you're then pushing it forward it stays on but i find with combs they tend to i've got quite thin hair and they'll tend to be a bit slippy on my hair so i'll have to back comb that and hairspray it um, but you want it to just sort of go in like this instead of back like that because if it goes back then it'll just fall forward again so you just want it at the back so when you push it forward it stays in um, but you might want with with combs elastic and a comb to make sure it stays in uh, what is cinema? Oh, cinema is... I can't, I can't, I can't go on forever because I've got so much to teach you. <laughs> this is cinema, this fabric. It's a straw fabric and it's made in the Philippines, but it's made from banana leaves. And they strip it all, tend to be in the Philippines, and weave it all together in, on big looms as if they're weaving carpet. And then we buy it in metres, so one metre, two metre, however much you want. And then we mould it into these shapes using blocks. So we mm. use these wooden blocks um, and we sort of car uh, steam the shape to mould over the block. Um, and then we can, you know, start putting Get it together. Together. So this here is done on a crown block. This here was moulded on a brim block. And then I put the two bits together. And then this mm. one was done on a cute little button, so just sort of a round piece of wood. And that's it. Yeah. And then the quills and things. But you could use unusual things. So I've used the bottom of coffee lids. I've used plates, um, little things like this. You could use this and just mold the cinema around it. And you can't pin it in as if you would with normal blocking. You, you'd use blocking pins and you'd pin it into the wood. But if you haven't got that, then you could just hold it in place, seam it, use elastic bands, anything to keep it in place. Mm. Um, and also the other day I was saying about a wok that I had, I had a wok and I sprayed some of that foam in it that you sometimes builders use and I sprayed it in, um, let that dry and then scraped off the bottom of it and so it turned it upside down so I had a dome shape, covered all that in paper mache and then used that as a, as a block as well. Before I had blocks I used that as a brim block. <laughs> I've got loads of questions here, might have to come back to them later. I'll try right uh, do you have an example of the peter sham i do if i run off and get it no no don't worry it's okay <laughs> i can i can look it up here yeah, but it's just like ribbon so but in it's it's got little grains on it it's got little lines on it but make sure it is peter sham and you can buy it from peter sham's baxter and abraham uh parking fabric the unique millinery any of these or it is Petersham because you can get ribbon which can look just like Petersham but it's not and then it won't work in the same way. I've got a hand there Catherine. Pardon? I've got a little bit there to hand just in my draw. Oh. Oh. So I've got some too. <laughs> have you? Brilliant. Yeah and I have as well. <laughs> That's, yeah it's got. Richard. So have I. <laughs> I was going to do the same thing I've got a box full. But... <laughs> right about the drawer. You can see each other. Yeah, mine is stripy, but it has got this oh, sort of rigidy awesome. sort of look to it. So yeah, lovely. <laughs> Everyone, Sean's showing that. So if you can't see it, just you've got arrows on the side of your screen. If you click on the arrow, then you can go through and see different people. Yeah, hey, Catherine. Um, my internet dropped, so you might have already answered this question. But on a sculpted base like your pink one, how would you kind of neatly cover the loop? Because obviously in this case, it's irregular shape, so I wouldn't necessarily put Petersham ribbon like you would on a button base. So just to cover the loop, would you? This have, one? Yeah, so something really, if you're just sewing straight in, how would you finish that? I put a little lining in, just have a little round lining. Okay. Also just this section, so you don't have to, if you do Petersham, you don't have to go all the way around here. Yeah. You just use this middle. 
okay and just what would you use what fabric would you use for a lining uh silk i use silks or i use a satin but i tend to i quite like silks with it Ooh, nothing too thick yeah. or nothing so thin or sheer that you're going to see through it but nothing too thick it's going to be hard to get your needle in so yeah. satin lining fabric think of or silky oh, fabric. Sorry. Catherine, hello. Um, could you um, at some point give me a list of all the suppliers and everything that you keep mentioning? Because I can't remember half of them. Please. Yeah, I can put it into the group. Um, or do you want me to tell you now, and you can? Um, or if you could just like list on a message somewhere <coughs> in the group, that would be fine for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Just remember that I wrote it down. Thank you. Right, how do you attach the flap to your button base? Oops, see that. How do you attach the flap to your button base, Catherine, in the hat you're using for the elastic example? If I'm just sewing it, so here I've just, I haven't finished it, but I'm just sewing it in three places. So I'm going to sew at the back and then this side and then this side, just in here. I'm not going to sew all over the place. I'm just going to do about five stitches there, five stitches here and five stitches here. Would you dab PVA? I tend to use a nice felt stiffener to go in here, which is a smelly old one. Um, a lot of places are not selling it as much now. You can get a PVA version of felt stiffener, but it's just not quite as good as the old smelly ones. If you can get that, it's better. But because it's toxic, they're stopping selling it now. My elastic arrived, but it's more like thicker elastic. Oh, that'll be the one I have. So yeah, so just you want to <coughs> Two is two. But just for now, at least you know how to sew it on. You can practice sewing it on, and you just want to make the loop and go through it, so it'll still work the same. It's only oh, for back elastic; it might not work. Oh, and also, you need to put the back of your head, your hair out, and then back up, and then it goes at the back of your head there, and then you can pull the hair out. Or put a brush through and style on the side. <laughs> so, yeah, and then you can just put your hands through like that or put a brush through and you're done. You never have it going under here. It's always at the back here. And then inside the little here. Uh, right, I'm just going to, I've got a bit of static from someone. I'm just going to mute everybody and I'm going to come back and ask quick questions afterwards. I'm going to quickly tell you about the Academy and then I'm going to do the prizes and then we're going to come back to Q&A so then you can ask me loads and loads of questions about hats. But have you all got your hats on? Is that all right? I'll show you again quickly. So we've got the elastic, we put it to the back of your head, the hat goes forward down to your neck. Then back up, that goes behind your ears. You put it in the place where you want it. And then you just put your hand through. Better with a brush, but just for now, I can put my hand through. And then you won't be able to see it at the back either because it's underneath all my hair. And then you could dance and move around, you know, and it doesn't come off. Um, if you use a hairband, it does tend to fall off. A little bit when you're dancing if you've got a hairband on it could flop forward that's why i love elastic i think it just stays on well <clears throat> can you all see that all right give me a thumbs up I can see your um, video again, your presentation. Okay, good, yeah. So I'm gonna, can I move that? I can't move that now. Uh, can you see all of it or are your faces along the top? Because I have to then move it. Uh, three faces, four faces along the side, going down. Oh, it's yours, okay, good, okay. So yeah, you can move the faces if it's in the way. So I'll just quickly tell you about the Academy. So this is the Millinery Business Academy that I set up over a year ago, just because some of you have asked me and I wanted to tell you about it in case you'd like to learn more and come in and, and sort of have fun with all of that. 
Um, so I started over a year ago and we've got now about 130 members in it, which is amazing and a just lovely, lovely group and they really help each other. So we have a private Facebook group for that. So you can ask questions anytime in that anywhere around the world and people come, you know, you can, uh, people come and answer. And then I'm always sort of dropping in as well and answering. Um, this is the one of the sections so we've got when you go into the academy and you join so it's a millinery and business academy you've got bundles in there you've got bonuses in there and then you've got the facebook group in there we also have a q a at the end of every month where you can ask questions live to me so say if we've got an expert on that month then they'll come on and you can ask questions to them but if it's myself then you obviously ask questions to me so every other month i do one on millinery so you can ask any questions about that and then every other month we do one on business, so then you can ask the expert that as well. And in millinery, we've had Judy Bentick come in, um, and then in the business one, we've had, uh, we had Beverly Edmondson as well with the millinery one, um, and then we've had loads of other sort of experts on websites, photography, SEO, PR and press. Um, really it's just sort of getting you from A to Z, so getting you from being a milliner at the beginning, you learn how to make hats and you also learn how to set up your business. So you learn how to do the websites, you learn how to take your photography, you learn how to do pricing, you learn about Facebook, how to sort of bring customers in with Facebook, you learn about Instagram, bring customers in with Instagram, all these things. So you've got bundles, you've got bonuses and you've got Facebook groups. That, this will be your sort of first, a bit of your first page. And then this is some of the bundles. So we've got knotted sizer with Judy, we've got the photography one, we've got parasizer one. So with on the millinery side, we've already got in headpieces, leather, uh, halo crowns, royal ascot hats, the big sculpture ones. We've got a backer, um, leather, did I say that? Um, I'm just doing one now on futuristic and sculptural fabric. Doing that at school as well. Um, that one's coming up in the next few days. And then we've got one on confidence, um, racing hats, we've got websites there, Rocket of Business PR, um, sculptural felt, we go more into the sculptural felt with that one as well, and loads more. So when you get in, you'll see a welcome video, um, you can watch that and have a look at that. And then when you go into each bundle, you'll have another sort of intro video for that bundle, and then you'll have a checklist and a workbook. So you've got those to work through as well. So every training bundle, you do one a month, you get a checklist and a work and then you get all your videos so then this one here we've got 10 videos with this one this is me doing it so we've got 10 different videos and i've got them all in my shop um, and so it just takes you through from a to z on how to do that certain thing um, and then the videos can go for sort of an hour to two hours depending on how much we're, we're teaching you and they're sort of in chunks of 10 minutes or 20 minute videos so you can get through them in little little bite sizes and then the bonuses, we've got a PR guide, how to get funding with your business, and we've got an Instagram guide within the bonuses. Um, and then this is, so here is one of our sort of mentors that's come in, and she was talking about how to um, get funding for your business. So this is one of our experts, and we have video with her, and we have sort of interview and things like that. So there's quite a lot going on in it. So we've got the, the group where you can ask questions 24 hours a day whenever you want and there's people from all around the world so they'll be able to answer you if i'm asleep then i'll surely be somebody that will be able to help and answer you um and i go in every day as well and you can always message me private message me but if you ask in the group everybody can see the answer so it's nice we have the q a at the end of every month where you can ask questions and then every month you get a new training bundle, one on business one month, and then ask uh, millinery the next month, and then on business, and then on millinery. Because at the beginning, I started doing it, well, I said to everybody, do you want um, a training on business? And, went, oh. and I said, do you want one on millinery? And they went, yeah, let's have one on millinery, and let's have a membership site on millinery. So that was really good. And then I wanted to put the business in anyway, because even if it sounds boring, I know how important it is to get you going, because if I didn't really take off until I understood that I have to learn about business. I used to think, well, people can just come to you, they need a hat, they'll find me. But it doesn't work like that. You have to go out there and find your customers and try and bring them to you with everything that you do and your social media and your so photos and um, emailing people and having mailing lists and things like this, just to sort of bring them in and keep them, keep them up to date. So we teach them about that. Um, and it is a monthly membership. So if I was going to do this as a course, then I would be 
sort of teaching, if I was going to do it as a course, I'd be charging about £120 for each one. But it's on. So you get a community, you get the Q&A every month, you get support, you get access from me, you get training 24 hours a day because you can watch from anywhere in the world. You can just log on and then have a look at any video that you want to have a look at wherever you are in the world. Now, can you all see this? Okay. I'm going to move this chat box. Yep, that's fine. So we get the so each individual training if i just sold them i'd sell them for around 120 pounds each um, let's do that ah my cat's come to say hi <laughs> Ricky. and oh i can't see it myself now so if you're going to do if you're going to buy individual one then it'd be 120 pounds, but i'm only selling it to you for 37 pounds a month so it's only £37 a month um, and it, it was sort of 30 at the beginning and it's gone up over time. So it's 37 and you get £5 off your first month. So if you fancy joining, then I give you £5 off your first month with code MAY5. Now this will work for seven days. So if you fancy joining, then use MAY5 and you just go to the Millinery and Business Academy. I can put it into Facebook later as well. So millineryandbusinessacademy.com and you will um, be able to sign up when you get five pound off your first month with code may five or if you join for a year then you get um the one month free Catherine, can i just ask you um i'm a member of the academy as you know i pay monthly at the moment if i wanted to pay a 12 month from next month can i do that or does it have to run for 12 months before i can no, if you want to pay 12 months in one go, yeah, you get the month free. You could cancel and then you could rejoin, but you'd have to okay. do that in May because I'm then closing it for three months. I won't open it again for three months. I've been, you know, opening it a lot in the last two months, um, but I'm only supposed mm -hmm. to be opening it every three months. So if you could do that by the end of May, if you just cancel and then you can just join again and have a month free. It, it's not a biggie but it was just a question out there so um <laughs> but i am really pleased and i must just say i've made a leather rose today i don't know if you can see that very well but i'm really chuffed with it it looks really oh, lovely that was a leather bundle yes fabulous i'm so glad you like it we've had just like it's actually got such a lovely group i just love everyone that's in it so thank you thanks for being so supportive mm -hmm. um good next one so the fast action bonus is if you join within 48 hours you can receive a live training with me so anybody that um, wants it everybody who does it in, in 48 hours will um, come on so I'm a zoom with me and I'll be talking about business it's so sort of the best tips of how to start a business um, a millinery business and just of anything else you want to ask me so it'll be a little mastermind extra zoom for you guys to come on um, and do that as well as your five pounds off and Highland Hat Blockers today have said that they will give £50 off a Highland Hat Block for one person. So who, everybody who joins in the next 48 hours, I will put you all into a hat and then draw out one person that's going to get £50 off the first block. Some of the blocks are only £65, so you can get a pretty good, pretty good price. So that's for that's one person. Brilliant. So if you would like to join, then you can have, come on the masterclass with me. Um, it'll be a group one, so whoever is come in in the 48 hours, and one person will get the £50 off, and then everybody gets the £5 off for the first month, and that is for another seven days. Catherine, can I ask a question? Yeah? Um, I joined yesterday, I'm not too worried about the £5, but could I join in the Zoom, please? Yes, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you jumped the gun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, that's fine. So just message me, I'll put your name down anyway, but just message me and make sure. Lovely, and, and the block as well. I was looking at those the other day. They're super. Hat blockers. They're good, aren't they? Because they're, they're a bit cheaper than dye morse because they're not wood, they're polystyrene, but it just um, they do last still. And they're a little bit cheaper than, than wooden blocks. So it's a good alternative. So, here are so therefore, Catherine, would they, they be, <coughs> excuse me, uh, posted easily yet? To post those hats, to post them to Australia, Highland oh, Hat Blockers, 
would be less than the timber blocks? Um, because they're lighter. Uh, so yes. they would be a little bit less than, than, than those, yeah. So they, they're not going to last you as long as Highland hat blockers, but they will, they are good. And they're really dense. So they're not right. really like light polystyrene, they're really dense. Um, so yeah. they're quite solid, but then they're much lighter, yeah. Um, I'm sure they're in Scotland. I'm sure they stand all around the world, so they would send to Australia. Thank you. You're welcome. So these are a few hats that people have made. Um, if you want any testimonials, then just ask in the Facebook group. We've got loads of lovely people who are also in the millinery, um, sort of the uh, Inspiring Creative Milliners group on the sport, and then they've also joined the academy, and we've had lots of nice people mentioning things. But this is a few hats that, that some of the guys have made. Down here, this one is Amanda's one. This one of Amanda made. Um, and she's embroidered on that one. So there's a few here from Amanda. And I've got one, a couple of my hats on the right hand side there. Um, yeah, so that's it. So then we'll, I'll just exit this screen and we'll go to any other questions that you might have. Okay, so I can, uh, if you want to ask a question now, we can just unmute yourself or you can put it into the, Zoom chat on the side and I'll just come to it. We'll have a look at if there's any questions. Hi Catherine, I have a couple of Highland hat blocks here just if anyone wants to see. Uh-huh. Whereabouts are you? Sorry, what's your name? Uh, Trey's Leiden. Oh yes, I can see you. Oh yeah, they're good yeah. aren't they? They're quite solid. They're excellent, yeah. Yeah, I really love that company. They're such a nice company. Yes, yeah, and they post to Ireland, so I'm sure they post to. Uh... <laughs> Fabulous. So, if any of you want to join, as soon as it's finished, just go to www.millineryandbusinessacademy.com, and then you can see more information there. Tell you a bit more. We'll just come to say hi and um, ask me any questions. You can just message me and. Um, ask in the group as well and use the code to get the five pound off and then I can see who's joined and then I put you into the, for the zoom with me and then the prize for the Highland Hat Blockers. I must tell you about prizes actually. <gasps> oh my god! Here we go! Who won? Right, come to questions in a minute. <gasps> Drum roll. Who has won? So, um, somebody who has been sharing, so you've all been sharing, and it's really lovely, thank you so much. So the person who's been sharing, is this one person I've picked, I'm picking out of a hat, and this person is gonna get a millinery book, and this person is Eliza Fielding. Yay. Congratulations. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Oh, <laughs> Yay, congrats. But I also have to give a shout out to Esther because Esther's been sharing so many of these posts over the last sort of few months, maybe a year. So thank you, Esther, as well. Um, Is that right, Esther Jarvis. Pardon? Esther Jarvis or another Esther? Esther St. Philippa. Sorry? There's probably a lot of Esther's. Esther St. Philippa. Uh, not a different one. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the lies are fielding. Now, uh, coming to the hat, I was just, it was so hard to pick more. So I was going through and I was trying to put it into categories. And I picked, so that li these are the top ones. And then I'm going to tell you, I mean, you're all amazing, but these are some of the top. And I will then narrow it down to one. So Joan Reed, Alexa Charlotte, Dee Dee, Amanda Marie Losell, Sarah Elizabeth, Azu Villas. Sarah Dorney, Head for Hat, Dinky, Annette Edger, and Carly Sage. Um, I would say these are sort of the ones I was really struggling with. I wanted to pick one out of all you guys. And then, so first prize goes to Ding You See. Ooh. Anyone here? Is that how I said it? Have I said it right? Congrats. <laughs> and um, that is a millinery box. So I will be ordering a millinery box for you. And then the second prize is Alexa Charlotte. Hey. <laughs> and that's an MS hamper. Woo! Wow. Thank you. Me. <laughs> Good job. Really nice idea. Thank you. A bit like a, yeah, definitely.
at 1940. So Emma Tampa, you can pick what you want. There, I'll, I'll give you a list, but I think they were a wine and chocolate, or a fruit basket, or one, something else as well. I'll have a look. Um, but there was another one, which is a wellness one, so you can pick from those. That's three. Now, you're all in the end. Oh, how many have we got left? Now, oh, you're still here. Oh my God. But I need to take screenshots of everybody, and then I'm going to have to pick. Someone. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nine. I've had so much trouble getting on. I've just been hearing you, but not seeing you. Not seeing me? No, I couldn't see anybody. And I finally, just in the last five minutes, been able to actually get on. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> oh, sorry. But you're here now. This is a good time to be here. Oh, I just, there are lots of people on this last page who are, I can't see your faces, but I can see your names. Okay, great. So I'm going to pick someone. I'm going to tell you that tomorrow, though, because I'm going to have to just pick somebody out of a hat, unless I just, well, no, I could, because I can't. <laughs> 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 That's the hat. That's what he Otherwise, I'm going to have to just go like that and pick someone, but I need to make sure you're all equal. So. The Zoom one, I will let you know tomorrow who's won that. And that's going to be a Beverly Edmondson book, which is a millinery book and it's like a journal. So I keep giving this away in these challenges because I just love it. So it's a journal, it gives you millinery tricks in there, food tube tips, and it sort of helps um, record what you're doing as well as your business journey and things. And it's got a, also a calendar in there of all the different um, millinery racing things that are going to that go on so you know we can use that for next year so it's got all of them around the world written in that as well so go to someone that wins that now let's go to questions mm -hmm. <laughs> one day, are you going to be putting this on facebook uh, because as i said i all i heard was you talking through the whole thing i didn't see anything yes i'll put it I'll, i've got the recording it is recording so i'll put it yeah. up on facebook you can see okay, it. Then I can watch it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we've only just got, it's only just, the video's only just come up for you. Yeah, I've been playing with it to try and get it up so I could see, um, and it's only in the last five minutes that I've done it, um, been able to get it. Are you on a phone? But I, could hear, I could hear you all, the, yeah, I am on a phone. I mm. could hear you all the time, but I just couldn't see it. Yeah, so you can then fast forward it and things on on the recording. So I'll put it I'll put it up um, secretly on YouTube so nobody else can see it, and then I'll put give you the link so you guys can see it. Yeah, okay, that'll be great. Catherine, I just want to say thank you so much because oh, I think we've all really enjoyed this, and um, yeah. I, I, and thank you so much. Uh, we've learned so much and. I've never done anything like this before and thoroughly enjoyed it and will definitely look into joining your your, your group. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great fun. Thank you. Thank you. It's been brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Frank, can you put the uh, winners' pictures up? I'd love to see them. Yeah. Put the winners' photographs up so I could see them. Oh, yes. I'd love to see them. Yeah, um, uh, it's one. I have to find everybody. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, afterwards, you mean? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, not now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that, can't I? That'd be nice. It's been amazing to watch so many different designs. They're just awesome. Absolutely Thank awesome. You. Yeah, yeah, I really loved it as well. It's like done so well. But it's just. Some of them, I mean, you're better than me. It's just brilliant. What people no. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, it's been a real uplifter being stuck at home having this to do as well. <laughs> Good. It's sort of lockdown, lockdown activity. Yeah. <laughs> I've never done this millinery wise. I've done challenges, which are design challenges. So this is the first time I've done a millinery one. Brilliant. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. I like the millinery one. Having four millinery ones are good. Sign up, so we'll probably do it again. Not for a few months. Maybe <laughs> 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 okay. do you do help me out through a tough time because I'm the lady that has the fire and this has really helped me get through and have a little bit of sanity or normality back in my life. So I really appreciate everything. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm.
nice to have a big group, isn't it? Everybody. Yes, it's lovely. God. Lovely. Bless Thank you all. You. Catherine, do you do physics? Pardon? Do you do physics uh, to uh, women's institutes or, or anything like that around the country? Yeah, I do talks. Oh, um, good. At talks, uh, talk on history. Pat, sorry, um, I can and I can do sort of a blocking technique. <coughs> so, uh, so women's institute for Fulham. I've done a hat making class for them, which was just fascinating. And we're sort of playing around with feathers and, and how do we get to do that how do we get to invite you or ask you your costumes etc then just ask whoever is supposed to be in charge of it and then just message me, email me so you should all have my email you could just email me back from the email i sent you lovely um, as long as it's around london somewhere that i can get to it otherwise i'd have to charge just for travel and things to get out to you out of London. Lovely. Oh, Is the play. lady that won on here? The lady that won? Yeah. Um, was she called Ding? Ding Yusi. Yeah. I-N-G-Y-U-S-I-E? There, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> I see her now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Is, is, did she cut the two bits? Is that two bits or or how did she do it? I'm intrigued. Uh, I used the whole uh, cone. So, uh, can you see it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Fantastic. One, and this is another one. Wow, yeah. Ah, so they're on top of each other. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very simple. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you can also uh, wear it uh, in another way. Ah. Fantastic. Put, put it on the other way. <laughs> <laughs> put it on the other way. I'm interested. Ah, oh, lovely. So I didn't add many things because um, uh, at last I, I feel um, not that simple. Uh, I tried the veil, I tried the feather, I tried everything, but then I just to leave it uh, simple, yes. Is this your first attempt? Is this your first um, time at doing millinery? No, no, no. I, I, I make cats at home. You so make cats at home? You <laughs> oh. yeah, but make them already. I don't make, um, I don't make fashion anchors. I make uh, um, daily hats. Or crown and brim. Oh. Yes, yes. What really kind of hats? Colours that you have as well. And the, just the, the fact, the shape of it, the fact that you did the two pieces, you know, it's quite, yeah, it's different. But a lot of you made lovely different pieces. Mm. Right, has anybody got any questions about the academy? If not, I'm going to answer some questions about hats on here on the side. Um, how do you lock felt onto a button block? Okay, that's a bit more difficult. So you need to join the academy for that because you need to stretch the cinema either side. Um, I can show you quickly. I'll just like me again. Oh, I haven't got one here. But if you're blocking, say if I use this, if you're blocking felt and you want to stretch it over, you would stretch over the one side, then the other side, then this side, then this side, and then you'd have to do your corners, mm -hmm. and then you just spread the corners out. You're sort of moulding it over the whole shape, and you use stiffener, um, and you use water, and you use an iron and wet cloth to get it round there, and you really pull it and stretch it underneath. So then you want all of this to be nice and neat, and all the mess to be inside. Uh, lots of stretching. Um, Denise has spent hours to figure out fastening elastic onto the back of my daughter's Do we have a glue stick embellishments on? I tend to sew everything. I don't tend to glue anything. If it's plastic on, on something or something a bit strange, you know, if it's wood, then I'll just try and use the wood uh, twig coming out of it. So sometimes I might use a bit of glue, but I try not to use glue. I try to stitch everything. Yeah, I'm the same. Charlie says elastic is brilliant and so comfy. I had a hat hire business and all the ladies complimented how easy it was to wear. So a lot of people do get scared of elastic a little bit. 
they say they want a hair band, but they don't realise how easy they'll have to give. Yeah. So try and push them towards it. Um, how do you cover the loop? Yeah, with the, I said that tonight with um, Petersham or with the lining inside it. How do you know where to stitch the headband? So a headband, I would do it either side. I put a lining in the back of that one. Um, either side and then at the top because otherwise it will flop around. So you need it in three places. You need supplies in the USA. If anybody, oh, B who need millinery supply to the USA on Australia and England. Uh, most of them do supply, but if you want supplies in Australia, then be unique and um, maybe ask in the group because there'll be lots of people in the group, the USA people who will be able to help. Um, Judith M for our suppliers. Judith M, that must be for American, that'd be good. Petersham's, yeah, loads of people can sell to America. Uh, elastic on sets. I'm trying to read them quickly. Peterson, Peterson. Catherine, can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. So it was on with the headband, and if the hat is going to the side, where would you then stitch? I know you say they do the three stitching, but because obviously the hat's going up slightly, where would you then put your three stitches? For the headband? Yeah. The headband's going to sit in that place, obviously. Um, so, <coughs> and you're just going to have to stitch. You're going to get a little bit of the bottom of the headband coming behind your ear. So you would sew it near to the bottom of the headband, and then the middle is here, and then just off the middle is here. So you need to put the headband on your head, and then you put the hat on top of the headband, and you work out where you want it to go. And then you can put a little bit of tape either side so that you remember, and then take it off and sew it in. So then you know, sew it in here, sew it in here, and then the middle would sort of be this bit, not the middle of the headband. Yeah. Here, just that bit. Perfect, thank you. So this one is obviously yeah, centred, but yeah it was off that would be my middle that's perfect thank you anybody else question yes catherine i was just wondering about stiffener and mm -hmm. um, if we want to use a little bit of stiffener to hold the shape of our new designs how do you, do that? Uh, you can use that so i use the old like i said the sort of smelly felt stiffener which is the old version you can still get that park a back to still sell it <laughs> sell it if you go in and get it but they're not always in the post now but that's the one i like uh, otherwise you could get a, a pba version which means you can stitch your whole hat into the pba um, let that soak in and then break it or you can paint it on afterwards i just find if you get pba felt stiffener or the old smelly stiffener they're the best but if you have the stiffener which works on cinemate and felt i don't i don't find that works very well that one so don't get one that's a mixture of both, just get one specifically for felt. And then um, if you're using the PVA, it's fine for this to be wet, it's all dry, and you just, I put it in in circles and I really rub it into where I want it to go. But if you're using the old smelly one, don't let it touch anything that's wet because you'll get white marks on your felt. It has to be, your felt has to be completely dry. Never let any water touch that one. Yeah, so get a paintbrush that you're using just for your stiffener, just keep it for that. If you use the old smelly stiffener, you never wash the brush, you just leave it. If you use the PVA, then you can wash it and you just rub it in, in circles and work it into the felt. And do you, you always use it after you've blocked your shape? I do, yeah, because they are a little bit stiffened already. You can stiffen it down and then leave it overnight. And then you can then block with it after that. But I tend to block my shape, take it off, and then add some stiffener inside. So this one, before I sewed it to here, I blocked it and I took it off. I put stiffener in it. I put it back on the block for another day and left it. And then I took it off and worked with it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've got a question here. Hi, do we have a choice of bundles which we have access to? For example, then maybe some areas we already had experience in. So you can look at all of the past bundles you have access to, which is really lucky because if I only just started the academy, then you would have to wait for me to produce bundles for a month. But now you've got them all there. So you can go and have a look whenever you want. Um, and you know, if, if we're doing 
look at the civic bundle that you're not that keen on. You can go back and look at other ones. So you can take a look and join up. You can go back and look at other ones. So whatever you fancy, you can pick and choose what you want. Catherine, I have a question. Uh huh. Is is a piece of cam ribbon the same as grain ribbon? Yes, grain oh. is the same. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Just make sure it is definitely that, and not not just a, a ribbon piece, but ribbon that looks like Petersham's. Okay, thank you. I sure will. Actually, the, the, you can tell normally because the ribbon has a straight line in the top, and Petersham right. doesn't. It just does that, and it doesn't. Have right, it has that little looping. You can sometimes yeah. you could probably see like a little hole right where the the curves are. You know the yeah. The, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because that's sometimes I use that to um sew ribbon into my hats to you know for the band inside yeah okay, okay. yeah yeah so, so this one i could put it just inside exactly yeah, yes it off nicely because it's yeah. good isn't it? Cause we, the reason why they use it is because then if you've got a client and she's got a sweaty head or it gets dirty the hat's not getting dirty it's the petersham that's getting dirty and then you right. can take the petersham out and, and put the new petersham in exactly yes that's why i use it that way thank you so much this has been such a great great um uh this three days was just awesome for me i work in new york and um i work in a hospital and you know what's going on here in new york yeah. all of this coronavirus thing going on mm -hmm. and to come home and to you know to go online i i leave work early just to run over here run home oh, and catch you online yeah i made a bad <laughs> dash for home <laughs> And um, I just want to say it's like really great. You're very refreshing. All the techniques, you know, gave me so many different ideas. And um, so pretty soon I would like to join your academy, but I got to get a whole bunch of other stuff out of the way first. But I definitely will join. And I, I'm mm -hmm. from New York and I'd love to come back to London. I was there five, three years ago, but I'd like to come back. Loved it. Loved oh, it. Oh, lovely. Thank you yeah, so thank much. You. You're, you're special. It'd be nice if you can come back for London Hat Week. And Absolutely, Hat that's Week. what I'm thinking. Is that October? Yeah, October. Definitely. I'm, I, I'm going to do it. They do the London Hat Walk when everyone wears hats all right through London and walk through for the whole day. Yes, I'm going to plan on that for real. I'm definitely going to hope I can get here. Yeah, I'm going to try. <laughs> oh, you take care. Okay, thank you so much. I love New York. I've never been and I want to go. Oh, boy. You're in for a big surprise. <laughs> It's awesome here. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I love New York. <laughs> I loved it when I was over there. Thank you for watching. Uh, very interesting. Fab, <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay, you too, Catherine. Thank you so much. You message me if you need anything about the academy and I'll talk oh. to you about it. If you need any Oh, absolutely. Ab absolutely. I surely will. Thank you. <laughs> uh, got any other questions? Um, yes, can I can I ask you a question? Please? Yeah. Um, uh, I want to join to carry on and uh, study how to make the hats. But when would it start the lesson? Straight away or? You know what it is, is so it, it's not a course as when it's going to start soon. It's something that's already there. So as soon as you join, if you yeah. join at seven o'clock tonight. You can go in. Yes. Website, you go in and then you get access to everything. It's all locked away for so people they can't view it, only unless you've got access and you're a member. All right. So then you can see all of the past trainings and then the new ones come out every month. But the new one, which is on uh, sort of space age or well, newish fabric, um, unusual fabric, uh, which is going to be a more sculptural side, which is coming out in about two days. And then we have the Q&A, which is the sort of questions and answers to come on live like this and meet everybody. All right. So That's you can it. go in and join, you can join straight away, and then you can join the Facebook group straight away and meet everybody. Yes, that would be lovely. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so I, made, I made some hats before, but I never learned. And basically, I'm a costumier and I had to make some hats with my fancy dress costumes. But my customers were pleased, but I, I really want to learn now how to make all sorts of hats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I love costumes. I love hats that are a bit like you know, sculptures, costumes. Um, yes. 3D. And when I was at university, I was trying to make clothes that are 3D and things were coming out. So when I discovered hats, I thought, oh, there you go. It's a 3D. Yeah. Before, when I made an 1830 dress, I made a very eccentric hat and I've got a photo of it. 
and it was very eccentric this time and people loved it so i love this veil you've got on here yeah you know it's vintage uh, vintage lace it's extremely thin and I've got a, a huge box packed with vintage feathers. Oh, lovely. I bought them about 30 years ago. And I said one day I would, I've used a lot for my costumes. Uh, people used to break them and it was all terrible. So now I can use them because they're about 1910, 1920. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So I think I have a real treasure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I love I, I bought love it the when I was, I was really good from the 20s. And I had my business in Switzerland, and that's when I bought it. Ah. Somebody came and said my aunt died. She was uh, um, she was making hats. Are you interested? And I said, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> so, so the feather, the feather is vintage as well. You know, it's quite uh, a bit special. But I, I, I know my hats a bit. Uh, theatrical, but like things a bit eccentric. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like odd. I like people a bit. I think it should be odd and odd. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyone else? No, I just want to say thank you, Catherine. Um, I've enjoyed it as well. Oh, and good. I, good. I read all your posts and everything all the time when you put everything up on Facebook and that. And yeah, um, we've had a bit of a stressful time here at the moment as well as everybody else. So it's been really great. Sorry. Thank you very much from Spain. Oh, Spain! Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm from, and I'm from Australia. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Azu Vila has a problem with your connection. Uh, Azu Vila, the winner, uh, has a problem uh, your connection. The winner? Uh, uh, Azu, she's got a problem with the connection. Yes, Azu Vila. She's uh, called me. Uh, sorry, my. Thank you with the hamper. My English is saying good, but uh, she <laughs> called me um say uh, she has a problem your connection. Oh, uh, and I'd say, she say is the very, has very a with the happy. Connection. Oh, <laughs> okay. but. Oh, I see Alisa Fielding. Azu Bilas. Azu Bila. So the people that have won is Eliza Fielding, uh, Ding Yusi, and Alexa Charlotte. That's who's won. So anyway, um, we'll put this on the recording so she can watch it afterwards. Oh, and then we'll okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Adios. Adios. Okay. Adios. Okay. Adios. Catherine, can I just ask you, I've been on mute, I've been trying to figure out how to cancel it, I've just managed now. Um, can I ask you about the polystyrene blocks? What was the name of the company you said? Highland Hat Blockers. Highland Hat Blockers, okay, thank you very much. Guy Morse Brown a lot, and if you go to Guy Morse Brown and you, you're ordering for the first time, they'll give you £15 off your order when you mention my name. Oh, right, thank you. If you order from them. So I've had blocks from them for 20 years. Um, they just last as well. But Highland Hat Blockers and Guy Morse, there are other companies as well. It's just the ones I use. Okay. Catherine, I have a question, please. Uh huh. Is there a cancellation policy with the Academy? Yeah, just let me know. That's fine. I normally say 14 days. If you could let me know 14 days before the thing so that I can make sure that you are cancelled before you payment comes out. But the only reason I still I, 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 I'm off work until probably mid July, so I don't know I don't know how much use I get after off it afterwards. So from mid July, yeah. So if you just want to join for the month, that's okay. I really hope everyone stays longer than that. That's why it's yeah, probably right. <laughs> but 
you know, if that's all you can do, then that, you just let me know. For audio, you can go into the admin section, so your section where your all your details are stored, and you just press cancel there and you can cancel it. Okay. Just cancel it before the, so whenever you join, the payment then comes out at the same time every month, the same date every month. So you just cancel it before that date and then you're fine. But anyway, I'm, all, I'm here anyway. So you can yeah. I'm sure I'll stay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, once I get into the community meet everyone. But yeah, you can stay for what, however long you want. And you can read, watch right. everything, listen to everything. And, you know, wait for the next few bundles, training. So, that's I've just joined. Have you? <laughs> Very excited. Yay! You are been really now. fantastic. I've really had so much fun this week, and I I would buy just about every hat that I've seen go up on the Facebook page. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> stunning, <laughs> stunning work. Oh, yeah, well, brilliant. That's great. Welcome to the club. Thank you very much. I look forward to learning more. Great. See you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so Hi, Karen. My name is Michelle. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Michelle. Um, I've got, um, well, my, my, I think I messaged you and my felt didn't arrive and I think that happened for another lady. But uh -huh. I, anyway, I, I'm not going to repeat because you must be sick of hearing how talented you are and inspirational <laughs> and how much we all love you. And you have, I think you've saved some serious mental health issues with all of us, I think, really. Um, there's a lady I can see called Valentina Sali. And I just wanted to say that I know it isn't simple what she's done. I've not made anything yet, but it looks like a really simple, it sounds very rude. It looks like a simple shape and it's, it's in a, like a taupe or a beige and it really suits her. She's got like a fringe and um, usually people have sort of long hair on the, on the side. I just wanted to compliment her because it looks very chic. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like everybody's oh, face and hats. I would agree with you. <laughs> I like everybody's face and hats, I really do. But um, I was just looking and she looks like she's at the film Amelie or something. Oh. Okay, just, <laughs> Thank just you. It's like a little, little fringe and it's a really nice simple shape. And that's not being rude at all. No, it's very elegant. <laughs> yes, that's it. Elegant, that's much better than simple, isn't it? So all the words. <laughs> we're, all, we're all hot and tired, aren't we? <laughs> well, that's quite a few people that made very elegant, lovely hats and embroidered yes. on them and put beading on. It's just really, really lovely what people have made. Yes. So I was, it was so hard to pick, you know, I wanted to give a prize to everybody because you've all done really, really well. Impressed me. <laughs> Thank you anyway. You are... <laughs> An, an inspiration to us all, I think. Thank you so much. It felt like um, tonight very much a sisterhood. Oh, thank you. Oh, I like surrounding You're myself welcome. with nice people, so you'll get good. Ditto. Ditto. Thank and uh, I shall be joining after this as well. So. Oh, brilliant. Lovely. I hope lots of people join because yeah. you've worked hard for this. You must have worked got a few hours in there. <laughs> yeah, quite a few. Yeah. But I also hope that, yeah, we'll see something nice. You know, even if you don't join, then it's just a nice challenge to do at this time. So. Well, thank you. Th thank okay. you, Catherine. And I'll need to go just now, but thank you very much for everything. Thank oh, you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you all. Thanks, Catherine. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Catherine. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Um, and I think these are cockerel feathers, yeah. and we got drenched one weekend, and suddenly all this colour came out of them. <gasps> oh. I know. Luckily, I was all in black anyway, so it didn't matter. Uh, but it was um, a little bit distressing. Is there anything that could fix colour into into these feathers? Is it any sort of spray or? 
that you'd recommend. When you're dyeing it, you can get you can use a sort of fixer to to keep it in. But I think if you put them in cold water, you might work a bit, or you can you get sprays to go on it. But there isn't really anything unless you're doing the dye yourself to sort of right. Thing. I'll, I'll uh, search it, but yeah, I've had that issue with um, some feathers, which are my ostrich ones. If I'm using them, and then someone spilled a cup of tea, and then it's just got, it's come out a bit. Yeah. Um, hairspray as well. You could try hairspray on it and just see okay. if, if that works. Yeah. I was going to say because I have no. They came from eBay as a collar. Um, mm. I mean, so if you buy the companies, and then yeah, I, right. yeah, that that's the thing. I think it was a it was a quick thing to go to Whitby, so you get loads on a ribbon. Natural, so that shouldn't the dye shouldn't come out of that if it's natural. Maybe, like maybe it was the ribbon that they're attached to. Maybe it's mm -hmm. maybe it was that rather than the you can the cut them off and then you can yeah. wrap them together with thread at yeah. the bottom, in big bundles, and then you sew them all on and. In bundles. I was I was going to say, should, should you sew through um, no, the, cut, the feather shaft? Right, okay. Yeah, get rid of it and then get your bunch and then wrap thread around the bottom and then go through a couple of times with the needle, just back and forth, and then hold it again and then pull them and test to see if they'll come out or not. So if any of them come out, then you just re-wrap them again and get a little bundle so they're just like that. Do it in small bunches. And then you can yeah. put them on the hat in a, an array and then they all spread out. Yes, so, yeah. Um, I, tr I tried just bundling some together. I had some um, white that I got at the hat show. Was it the hat show? At the Hat Week exhibitions. Oh, um, probably 16 years ago, thinking about it. Wow. Um, and <laughs> they're, I think they're threaded together. But yes, um, um, yeah, yeah. as you can see, they haven't had, they haven't found their purpose yet. <laughs> mm, I do that with things as well. And sometimes I don't want to put them on a hat because I want to just keep it. <laughs> yeah. Especially use it, especially the vintage stuff. So they look nice. Yeah. Yes, Catherine, the, um, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, for, for dyeing stuff, if you put it in vinegar and water, that's a setting agent. Ah, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Fun. I dye a lot of fabrics because I'm a designer as well. I do um, wedding gowns and racewear and everything, and plus the millinery. And when I, I dye a lot, and I use put vinegar and water, uh, and that helps set the dye. Mm. Hester, oh, that, Hester yeah. that, sorry, that's that's what I use as well. So I use jacquard dye. Um, and yes. add vinegar, and that sets the, the dye onto your feathers, and you can dye cinnamon with that as well. Um, yeah, brilliant! Thank you, everyone. <laughs> and then, yeah, you just hair dry it gently, and they come back to life. Yeah, yeah, you have to hair dry them. Yeah, so they go nice and fluffy again. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, I've got to go. I'm going to get my grandkids ready for school. Um, because it's quarter it's to seven morning. in the morning here. Yeah. Yep. You're on <laughs> I haven't actually been to bed. <laughs> so I will, um, yeah, I have to leave now. And I thank you very much anyway. And I'll watch it on YouTube. Okay. I'll put it up as I said. Um, yeah, thank you. Because as I said, I had so much trouble. I could hear you all the time. But then I finally got it up after you finished doing everything so oh, shame that's but okay technology just doesn't work sometimes <laughs> and it's the first time i've ever used zoom too so <laughs> okay thank you i must go now okay bye Catherine. Yeah, i love yours as well your piece the way it just goes up like that really nice can i ask you something just quickly yeah. how many um hats do you keep yourself because how do you part with them i know the trucks yeah you all, you all find when you've made one then you want you have to give it to the client but it's like your child that you've made yeah it's hard to sort of pass <laughs> that was i thought i'd never yeah just as much as you but um yeah so most of the time clients do so it's fine but yeah it's quite hard to part um but then i do get bored of them sometimes as well i might absolutely love one and then i'll get bored of it so then it's fine i can sell it on Okay. <laughs> uh, I have probably 
I don't have that many. Um, here, I've probably got about 10 hats at home here. But I'm always making and then I'm selling and then I'm just sort of changing them around. I hate making the same hat twice as well. So I like to, I let them to go and I can make another one. Right. It's all right. But I know what you mean. When you've made it, you yeah. just throw the little part with it. My other half said that. Yeah, he said to it. me, I, I just couldn't do it. It's the same as I've said about buying vintage jewellery and selling it. He said there is a, you know, a major problem there. You're not going to sell any of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it. £250 or £300 or £400. Well, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Put the price up. Yeah. So you, so you feel comfortable selling. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? I've got another question. I bought a long time ago a hat with long, I mean, big brims, you know, quite big, in felt, but velvety. It was green. It became, started to go a bit funny because of the light and the sun. Um, Can I dye it? Or would I have to put it on the, sh on the head to, because, oh, is it going to be flat again? Because it's just shapely like that. Sorry, it's a brim, is it? A brim and crown and brim? Yes, it's all in one, you know, it's just, uh, I've got it there. If you want, I'll show it to you. To dye it, you're going to have to soak the whole thing and dye yes. it. Yes. Or you could spray it, if you had a spray, you could spray it a colour. But I know that would give you a different look and it would, it would put a bit of metallic on it. But um, to dye it, you would have to wet it all, but that's okay, you can do that. Yes. Yeah. But would I have to put it on a shape, on a head, so yeah, to have the shape again? again. Um, yeah, you probably you'd have to block it again. I would take out the Petersham, take out any lining. You can I don't know what, how it looks, but you could try and do it without gently, and then just sort of tease the top back again. Because hopefully, it will just take back its shape. But if you've crunched it and you've had to really work with it, then you're going to have to re-block it. No, 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 no. It's it's I bought it. It's just just a normal hat that put on your head with a big brim like that. But it, it's discoloured and it's not very pretty now, and I just want to dye it to make it because it's so nice. Maybe it's you a can dip, it in, dip the brim in without dipping the crown in, and then just. Oh, no, 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 it's all in one. It's a block. Oh, it's okay. All in one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you can you can do that then. You can dye it. Stick it yeah. all in. And I could put it on the head so it would dry again, and that's it. Yeah. You might have to do a bit more work of ironing. I use I use a wet cloth and an iron to get the shape, so you could put it back on a block yeah. and do a bit more ironing. Yeah, it'd be quite messy to dye it, but <laughs> a little bit. Cold water dyes maybe in your sink. <laughs> <laughs> I have to try salt. to. Salt is used for setting as well, isn't it? Is that right? Salt, yes, yes, mm. yeah. Salt or vinegar, yes, that's true. Mm. Okay. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, well, I've got a load of questions on the side here, but if anybody wants to just ask, because uh, I've still got loads and loads of questions. I oh, will get down there now. Good. Okay. If anyone else wants to ask, we will, you know, got two minutes and then we'll let you all go. Can mm -hmm. I just ask you, sometimes a shape will lend itself to going either side. And mm -hmm. I wondered if, like, with the hairband, if you've got a tip for having an adjustable option. Mm. Like I was playing around with this hat, this one, and actually it looked kind of good on both, both ways. I was just mm. like, you know. If you could turn it around so that you can just like, literally lift yeah. it off and turn it around, it's okay. But if you want to go from this side to this side without turning the headband around, yeah, really. Like sliders, I wonder if there's a way to stitch it to like a hairband. Unless you use a Velcro type thing, you can take it off and put it on the other side. But if it's too heavy and if it's going down one side, then a hairband as well, it will drag it down. So you might need elastic and a hairband to keep it on because otherwise the weight of it. So say something like this, that's why I use the hairband and elastic because just to the hairband, it's going to slip and just headband, it's going to slip. So I could have put a comb in it. That's the other thing, you could put a comb in, you could then push it in there and push it in here, wherever you fancied if you put a comb in it. Yeah. Elastic or a hairband, it sort of has to stay where you put Same it. Place. Put this one up. Change the hat. Mm, this hat is lovely. Thank I really you. like it. I love big sculptures. Yes, yeah, I, I, like, I love big as well. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks quite comfortable to wear. 
yeah mm. and it's fine it's quite thick here so i might actually change that i mean it matches the hat but it doesn't yes. my hair oh it doesn't matter i find it's okay mm. and then i've got elastic as well just to make sure because otherwise it could be a bit oh yes yeah. well I've, I've fixed the elastic on my hat so it's it's all right now i've done it we're all right with that we're all right with elastic yeah perfect Sarah, yeah. I like yours going up like that. But uh, wonderful one going up. No. Sarah Clark. <laughs> Hello. Um, it was a tutorial in Hat Magazine eons ago. And it's um you do uh you can buy pre-made things of it now, so or something similar. So you start off with a spiral this is and then wire the edges. Um and then which I learned how spiky cinema is doing this hat <laughs> and how it shreds your fingers. Yeah. But it, and trouble is it started off, the stitching did used to match. It doesn't anymore. Oh, it's it, colour. It's got, it started off as a very vivid sort of electric blue and it's gone grey. So I didn't know whether to remove the comb and the base and spray it yes or spray a little i think yeah i think that's the, the best way of just on the side where your thread is and just sort of just up the side blend it yeah that's the thing we have to yeah. keep them out of the sunlight these hats i put yes, them in i haven't the change them a lot because otherwise yeah just, it's, um, fade mm. Yes, I haven't realised that when I made it. <laughs> but uh, yes, I do. I do still like wearing it, even though it's um, not quite as it, it was made originally. But I need longer hair for it. <laughs> so um, it looked good as well if you had it really, really big and then just good for aspect. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Okay, I've got more questions happening. I think. Oh, thank you so much. It's a lovely time. Thank you. It's fab. Thank you for a wonderful week. I have two of my hats. I was tempted to wear one. <gasps> Where did I study? I studied at Surrey Institute of Art and Design. And I, then I worked for Stephen Jones and I worked for Catherine Delady. And I did a bit of trimming for Victoria around on the side and learned that way. Um, I didn't have money myself to do a lot of courses. So I, t I worked for designers instead when I first started out. And then the rest self-taught different things. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. Surrey Institute of Art and Design. And before that, I was in Somerset. So I grew up in Somerset. So I went to the Somerset College of Art and Technology before that. And I've had a, uh, Jennifer says, I've had a great time doing this. I'm keeping it on all night. <laughs> Not being able to wear it out <laughs> until it's time to be warm. I've had a lovely time. Um, I'm going to join the academy too, at least while I've got all this time. Yeah, why not? We need to be doing training right now. This is the time to learn different things. I'm starting a new course tomorrow night, which is um, Elisa Johnson. And if any of you know her, but it's a sort of six week course, no, 12 week course. So I'm learning that about, more about business um, online stuff. So yeah, good time to be learning now. But so we're all ready for next year because by January it's all going to kick off again. We're all going to be like everybody's going to have weddings, wanting hats. You know, it's all going to start. So we need to now get our collections done, photographs, practice as much as you can, get ready, get your business sorted, get your website up, ready for next year. Oh right, yes. <laughs> Can I in? just say something? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is. My one and only Philip Tracy hat, Tracy oh, hat. Wow. And I left it on a block in the hall because I thought it was a piece of sculpture. Mm. And the moths got it. Oh, no. Oh. Is it felt or velvet? Yes, it, it's felt. Um, wow. And um, it's black, so it's hot. Uh, well, it's a very dark navy, actually. Uh, so it's hard to see. But... I, I've brushed it like crazy, but I just wanted to warn people, you know, that felt, mm. uh, nice wool and felt is, because obviously it was expensive, so it was very tasty, the moths liked it. <laughs>
Mm. Oh dear. Yeah. With feathers, yes. you can get mites in. Be careful where you get your feathers from, because if you get it yeah. from eBay, you could have mites in them, and then they could start spreading into your fabrics and things. Yeah. So no, no, you put them in a freezer for two weeks. Yeah. Okay. And it keeps the course with Ian Bennett. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I've still got some. I've got a hat in my freezer. It's a vintage animal-looking thing. And, um, and I've got some feathers in there as well. I must take them out, but I just leave them there because I'm like, is it all dead yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did worry a bit about mite, moths and mites. But, yeah. um, so last, that's how Ian Bennett sets. Oh, hang on. Will I do more challenges in the future? I'm not sure. Maybe in a few months time, but I'm not sure what. If we'll do repeat this one or we'll do something else. But probably I will, but not for another three months, unless we have another lockdown, <laughs> we'll do it again. Um, Let's hope not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but if we do, then I can entertain you. But you know, will we be doing more challenges? Yeah, um, that was lovely. Thank you. Um, thank you. It's been really great. I've had, a, I can't move this. Oh, yeah. No, oh, here we can. Thank you, it's been really great. I'm a student who has several millinery placements planned over the summer, all of which have now disappeared. So it's been great. Good. I'm glad. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. Had a wonderful time on the course. We'll be we'll join up tomorrow. I'm on a hat for already. Catch you later. I'm going to bed. I thought there was another question. That's how Ian Bennett sets his feathers. Who's saying that? With vinegar and water, I presume. Someone's having a conversation. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Me. Okay. on messenger or put it into the group and i'll answer you if you've got any other questions okay um, bye, <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you all for coming on so and lovely to see you and thanks thank for you. doing it thank you thank you bye 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 40 still on that's good <laughs> <laughs> still working I'm just like, whoa, I'm really, <laughs> it's a big life. <laughs>